Hi, it's Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel. I have an awesome project to share with you guys today. I'm walking you through how to turn a tiny unorganized closet into a beautiful built-in file cabinet closet. I partnered up with Rockler on this project to come up with a free set of project plans for you guys. You can find the link to their website in the description below and there you'll be able to download the PDF project plan that includes a material list, tool list, and everything else that you'll need for this project. Rockler gifted me some awesome tools in order to make this project happen and you can find a link to other tools that I used in the description below. Let's jump right into the project. The first thing that I did was clear out the entire closet. I took measurements of the closet and designed everything in SketchUp so I could figure out all the dimensions for my drawers, shelves, and glass door. If you don't have a design program, I recommend sketching your plan on a piece of paper and marking your measurements out that way. You'll have to remove the door to your closet and remove any old material and shelving that you aren't going to use. Be careful removing any material that you are going to repurpose. I ended up reusing the old wall cleats for my new shelving. Here I'm removing part of the door stop because this is where my drawers are going to go. Now that the closet is clear and we have our design plan, the next step is to install the drawer slides. My drawer boxes are 28 and a half inches deep, so I'm using 28 inch drawer slides. To determine drawer slide length, only measure the box, don't include the drawer front, and then round the measurement off to the lower number on the tape. So hopefully your closet is a little more square than mine. Mine is a little janky. On the left side here, I have a two and a half inch gap. And on the right side, I have an inch and three quarters gap. So I had to make some little spacers for each side. I just cut down some two by four lumber for that. But you really wanna make sure that your drawer slides are nice and straight. If they're going in or out, your drawer is not going to be able to slide in and out correctly. So you want to make sure that your drawer slides are at the same distance apart um, on the back side, in the middle, and the front. Also you want to make sure that there's the same gap in front here. So I'm doing inset drawers and the face of my drawer is three quarters of an inch. So I left a three quarter inch gap on this side and this side also. On this side you can see I had to add some little shims to make sure that my drawer slide was nice and straight, but now it'll slide nice and smooth. So I'm taking my spacers and screwing them into studs in the wall using three and a half inch wood screws. Once the shims are secure, I secured my drawer slides to the wood shims with the screws provided.
Now I'm building my drawer boxes. Your drawer boxes should be one inch smaller than the opening to account for the half inch drawer slide on each side, depending on the type of slides that you use. I used half inch plywood for my drawer boxes and I cut all the pieces down to size using my table saw and miter saw. Next, I'm cutting a quarter inch dado on the inside of each half inch drawer panel, which will hold the bottom quarter inch panel in place. To cut the quarter inch dado using a table saw, you'll need to take two eighth inch passes. Set your blade depth at a quarter inch and set your fence at a half inch so that your dado is a half inch from the bottom of your drawer. Now I'm cutting the quarter inch plywood for the bottom panel of my drawers. Before assembling the drawers, sand each of the individual pieces. Dry fit all your drawer pieces together first to make sure everything fits and then secure the drawer pieces together using wood glue and a few brad nails. Last, I'm sanding down each of the drawers to get off all the dried wood glue. Now it's time to install the drawers. Disconnect the drawer member from the cabinet member of the drawer slide. Secure the drawer member to the drawer boxes with the screws provided. If you're doing inset drawers like me, your drawer slide will sit flush with the front of your drawer box. The next step is to install the shelves. Just for reference, my bottom shelf comes out flush to the outer closet trim. The next two shelves go three quarters of an inch past the door jam, and the upper two shelves are only half the depth of the closet in order to easily store items higher up. My shelves are two inches thick and are spaced 10 inches apart. Measure and mark where you want your shelves to go. I'm using quarter inch plywood for the bottom of my shelves, one inch wall cleats, and three quarter inch plywood for the top of the shelves. Here, I'm securing the one inch cleats to my wall making sure they're nice and level try to secure them into studs in the wall if possible then i'm nailing the top and bottom plywood pieces to the wall cleat using a brad nailer and brad nails
now I'm working on the trim for the shelves. I ripped one by three boards down to two inches so that they fit the face of each shelf. Add some blocking to your shelves if necessary to nail your two inch trim too. I cut a two inch board for my base trim and secured it to the door jam using pocket screws. The next step is to build the drawer fronts. I built my own shaker style drawer fronts. Your drawer fronts should be an eighth inch smaller than the opening of your closet, a sixteenth inch gap on each side. Here I'm cutting my rails and styles down to size. I used the rail and style two-piece router set and my router table from Rockler to cut cope and stick joints for the shaker style drawer fronts. I used the style bit to route the groove in the inside edge of the rails and styles. And then I used the rail bit to route the tenons on the ends of the rails. I used the rail coping sled to safely secure the rails while routing the tenons. Dry fit your rail and style pieces to make sure they fit. and then measure and cut the quarter inch inside panel piece. Dry fit the entire drawer front to make sure everything fits and then sand down your panel pieces until they're nice and smooth. Secure your drawer front pieces together using wood glue and clamps and then sand off any dried wood glue. I built the same shaker style door using the rail and style two-piece router set. I custom ordered this textured glass from Rockler. Carefully slide your glass into the groove. Use space balls if necessary to ensure the glass is nice and secure. Use 
use wood glue and clamps to secure the door frame together. The next step is to install your drawer faces. I used playing cards to get my spacing perfect. Clamp the drawer face to your drawer and then secure it on the back side using wood screws. I made some temporary drawer pulls using scotch tape. Next, it's time to fill nail holes and sand. Use scrap lumber to fill any previous hinge holes. Use wood filler and spackle to fill any nail holes or holes in your walls from previous shelving. Sand your entire closet once the spackle and wood filler have dried. Caulk any visible seams in your shelving and trim. Paint your drawers, doors, and closet your desired color. I used a flat white paint on the inside of the closet and a satin white paint on my door, drawers, and closet trim. Secure the hinges to your door and then to your door jam. Install your door hardware and drawer hardware. I also installed a magnetic catch so my door closes nice and tight. Last, I used Rockler's half-inch hanging file drawer inserts and attached them to scrap half-inch plywood pieces. I secured the half-inch plywood to the drawer box using pocket screws. Make sure your file hanging supports are low enough so that any file tabs clear the drawer above. This closet is in our home office and it used to collect a ton of junk, but now we have five sturdy shelves for books, two large file cabinet drawers, and one smaller drawer for miscellaneous office supplies. I know that was a ton of information to take in. Go check out the link in the description for the free PDF plans for this project. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for following along. I'll be back with more DIY projects soon.